Welcome to GreenBone's tutorial series on learning the open source GreenBone Vulnerability Manager. This series will cover the various ways to install GreenBone Community Edition and provide some helpful insight into configuring and using GreenBone's various vulnerability management features. GreenBone is an enterprise network and host vulnerability scanner and vulnerability management solution that allows you to identify known software weaknesses in your IT environment and manage and remediate the vulnerabilities, making your network more secure. This video is a guide for installing and running the free GreenBone Community Edition from pre-built container images using Docker. Running the GreenBone Community Edition from a Docker container consists of a distributed service architecture where each service is run in a dedicated container. The orchestration of these services is done via a Docker Compose file, which you can download from the GreenBone server, but you can also access it from the GreenBone community portal that hosts the commands and instructions used in this video for building the Docker containers. You can find a link to those resources in the video description. The community Docker containers are a great option for running GreenBone vulnerability management solution in order to scan your local network from any system, no matter what operating system you're using. Using the GreenBone community Docker containers, you don't need a dedicated system for vulnerability scanning, and you can start and stop the GreenBone containers whenever you want to scan a network or host. In this video, we'll be setting up a GreenBone community container environment on the Ubuntu Linux version 22.04, but this process will work for any operating system you have Docker installed on. The minimum system requirements for installing the GreenBone Docker container environment are at least two CPU cores, at least four gigabytes of RAM, and at least 20 gigabytes of free hard disk space. However, we recommend that you have at least four CPU cores, eight gigabytes of RAM, and 60 gigabytes of free hard disk space. Again, these installation instructions can be found at the link to the GreenBone community in the video description. So let's get started with installing the GreenBone Community Edition Docker containers. First, let's make sure our Linux repositories are up to date by running apt update. Here we will also add the dash Y flag so we don't have to confirm. The next thing we need to do is make sure that curl is installed on our system because we will need that to download the Docker compose file for the GreenBone containers. So let's install curl. Again, we'll add the dash Y flag just so we don't have to confirm. If you're using Fedora or CentOS, you will replace the aptitude package management application with the DNF package manager. Next, we're going to install docker.io and docker compose from the main Linux repository. To allow the current user to run Docker and start the containers, they must be added to the Docker user group. To make the group change effective, either log out and log in again, or use su. Next, let's create a directory to store all the files for the GreenBone Docker environment. We will also set an environment variable for our destination directory to download and store all of our files. You can see we've stored these files in a directory in the user's home directory. That's important to know because if we stop the containers or reboot our system, we'll need to find the saved Docker files. As I mentioned before, GreenBone Docker containers are an orchestrated environment of several individual containers. So we're going to download and execute the Docker compose file. That's going to give us the configuration we need to install all the components. You can copy and paste the Docker compose file from the community portal. But for this tutorial, we're going to download it directly with curl. Then we need to run Docker compose on the compose YML file, which will automatically download and start up the containers. If you try to start the GreenBone Docker containers and get an HTTP error message, the request took too long to complete, just try to start them again. There may have been an error establishing a connection to the server. By default, a user admin with the password admin is created. This is not very secure, so we recommend changing the default password. To do that, we're going to execute the GVMD service and set the admin password. You can use any password here in the commands password field. We're going to just set it to password123, which is not very secure, 
so don't use that password. If you want to see all the runtime logs from the Greenbone environment in real time, you can start the log monitor process. Finally, now that all the services are running, we can open the web interface to use the Greenbone Vulnerability Manager. By default, the service runs on the localhost IP 127.0.0.1 and the port 9392. We can open the browser and just type in that location, or we can just start a new tab here and run the command xdg open to automatically open the Greenbone web interface for us. To log in, we just enter the username admin and the password that we configured in the previous step. And there we go. We're now logged into Greenbone, hosted on a Docker container environment. From here, you can access the Greenbone documentation from the help user manual in the menu. It's important to note, when you start the Greenbone Docker containers, it will take some time to synchronize the vulnerability feed and to build the database. The amount of time this process takes depends on your system's available CPU and RAM. If you try to scan before the synchronization has completed, you will receive an error message and your scan will not begin. To check when the feeds have finished synchronization, you can go to the feed status page. Go to the administration menu and click on feed status. When updating for the first time, the feeds will initially show an update in progress status. Once the initial synchronization has completed, we can quickly configure a scan to run from the task page using the task wizard. The scan will automatically be created and started and will appear on the tasks page. If you want to stop the Greenbone Docker container environment, you can use a similar command to the one used to start the containers, but this time specify down instead of up without the dash D flag. This will stop all the Greenbone containers. If you're working in a different bash terminal session than the one that you used to install the Docker containers, you won't have the download environment variable set. So first, navigate to the folder you downloaded the docker compose.yml file to, and then execute docker compose with the down command. Also, after a reboot of your system, you don't have to go through the entire installation process again. You can just run the docker compose configuration again. You need to go to the directory that the docker compose file was downloaded to. For this tutorial, we downloaded the file to a directory called Greenbone Community Container in the user's home directory. Then run the docker compose up command to start the Greenbone docker containers. Also, we can note here that the containers are persistent. So the configuration changes you make to Greenbone Vulnerability Manager will be available each time you start and stop Greenbone. Finally, Let's cover how to update both the Greenbone Vulnerability Manager and the vulnerability feeds. Before we do that, I'll just remind you that these instructions can be found on the Greenbone Community Containers workflow page, and there's a link to that in the video description. To update the containers for the Greenbone Vulnerability Manager itself, you can run the docker compose command combined with the pull command instead of the up command. Also, be sure that you're inside the directory where the docker compose.yml file was downloaded or include the full path for that file. This will stop all the Greenbone containers. After the pull is complete, you can use the docker compose up command to start the Greenbone container environment again. To update the vulnerability feed, we'll do a feed synchronization. The feed synchronization always consists of two parts, downloading the changes via pulling new container images and loading the changes into memory and the database. Again, make sure we're in the directory where the docker compose.yml file is and use the docker compose pull command. This time we'll specify all the feeds to update. Then we need to copy the data from the images to the volumes. So we run docker compose up again and include the newly pulled feeds. After the update, if Docker is not running, we need to start it again. When syncing the feeds, it may take several minutes to hours, depending on your system resources, such as CPU and RAM. Afterwards, you can verify that the sync is complete by checking that the last synchronized date has changed in the Greenbone feed status page. So let's do a quick recap. You can quickly install Greenbone Community Edition Docker containers, the containers can be prepared using a Docker Compose file that's available from the Greenbone community portal, along with full instructions on how to prepare your system for running the orchestrated Docker environment. The installation does require some time to complete its synchronization and create the vulnerability database, but after that's finished, 
the containers can be started and stopped as needed. The containers are persistent, so the changes you make will be available next time you start them. You can also easily update both Greenbone and the vulnerability feeds for the containers using Docker Compose from the command line. It's a good idea to update the vulnerability feeds often to ensure you're scanning for the most current and recent vulnerabilities. These Greenbone Docker containers are a quick way to conduct vulnerability scanning as part of an enterprise vulnerability management program. This is also a good way to learn how to use the Greenbone vulnerability scanner.